repent. I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahushua Hakadash Laiwalam Yom. I want to give double honors to my elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me sound doctrine. Strong shalom to you men and women out there doing this work diligently and chiefly keeping the faith and making your calling and election sure. We're going to get right into it here. Um, I got the word repent pulled up. Uh, the spirit is only, you know, to go into the um, definition of repent, you know, get some precepts and then, uh, you know, go to the next video, man. On to the next video, right? Uh, let's get right into it. Repent. Uh, this is a definition here from Google. It says, uh, feel or express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing or sin. Right? That's a great definition. Right? The Lord wants us to repent, right, in the land of our captivity, according to the what? Baruch chapter 2 and verse 30. Right? And remember ourselves. Right? He wants us to do what? Show remorse. So show sincere regret for the sin that we are doing against them, man. Right? Another definition it says, um, view or think of with a deep regret or remorse, right? Fear, regret, or uh, penitence about, right? So this is a great definition here, man. You understand? To fear, remorse, regret. Let's get the blue out of here, right? Um, this is Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, which says, it says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, right? So the times of refreshing is coming, right? You want to repent so so you can have that fresh white tea, so you can have that fresh garment, right? All the stains represent sin, but the, as, as you repent, right? You're washing, you're getting clean by the word, man. You understand? So let's get the definition in the Greek word, I believe, here for uh, repent. Metanaeo, right? Uh, to change one's mind, right? To change one's mind for better. Um, to amend with abhorrence of one's past sins, right? Mataneo, right? Strong's G, 3340. Metanaeo. 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 Metanaeo, right? So this is what the Lord strongly want us to do, right? This is what all the prophets all the um teachers everybody man this is what everybody in the scriptures want you to do repent this is what our lord yahweh shall want us to do repent right because for the kingdom of heaven is at hand let's get into some precepts man the lord wants us to do what change our mind right stop calling evil good and good evil let's get Sirach chapter 18 and verse 20, uh, 23 real quick we're gonna get into these repentance uh precepts man Sirach chapter 18 and verse 23 says let me get it real quick seeing what about the highlight right here actually right here um uh Syrac, uh chapter 18 verse 23 it says before thou prayest prepare thyself and be not as one that tempteth the lord right over in uh matthew chapter 6 i believe it tells you the lord's prayer it tells you what? Do not be like the heathen, man. The Lord know what you need before you even ask for it. So pray the Lord's prayer, right? So this right here is telling you, Sirach chapter 18, verse 23. Before thou prayest, prepare thyself and be not as one that tempteth the Lord. Right? Using many vain words. Verse 24. Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end and the time of vengeance when he shall turn away his face, man. Right? So that time of vengeance is coming up. That, that fiery indignation. Right. The Lord telling us to think upon that wrath at the end and fear for that thing. Right. Let that be a motivation for you to repent. That's what these verses bring out, man. It's trying to right, uh, uh, indicate to you that you need to repent because that damage, that wrath is coming. man. Right. Verse 25. When thou has when thou has enough, remember the time of hunger. And when thou art rich, think upon poverty and need. man. Right. To, this is to keep you balanced. Right. Repentance is to keep you balanced. Right now we're in, a, in these chains of darkness. The only way we can be balanced or attempt to try to, you know, be righteous is by repenting, make a supplication to you. How about Shem Yahushua doing the work? Right. You understand? Let's get Psalm chapter 32 and verse 5, man. You got to repent, Yasharala. That's the main thing here. Constantly repent over and over and over again, man. Right. 
In Psalm chapter 32 and verse 5, it says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sins, Allah. So right here, right, is letting you know that you need to repent and confess your sins unto the Lord. And also have faith that the Lord forgive you for them sins, man. Don't let them sins weigh you down, man. You understand? And I'm going to get that after this. Don't let those sins weigh you down. You got to repent. What is sin? Sin is the transgression of God's laws, man. That's what sin is. The transgression of God's laws. You're breaking God's laws. You're in sin, man. For example, Leviticus 11 and 7 says the swine is unclean. You're eating the swine. You're in sin. Repent from that and never do the sin again. Do what? Show remorse. Show show sincere regret or remorse for your sin, right? For your breaking of God's laws and don't do it again, man. And have faith that he will what? Forgive you. You understand? Let's um let's get uh so I get let's get second address. Don't let your sins weigh you down, man. And that's what this is about to bring out. Second address chapter 16. Because a lot of us that get caught up in our sins to the point where you don't want to come out of it. Right? Second address chapter 16. In verse um uh let me see here. Verse 76, I'm going to start at verse 75. It says, be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your guide. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord God. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Verse 77, woe, W-O-E, destruction, be unto them that are bound with their sins, and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns that no man may travel through. Right. Verse 78. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. Right. So if you don't get these sins out of you, man, so, you know, working on these sins, getting these weeds up out of your body, you shall be consumed with that fire that shall come at the end. This is the wrath that's coming at the end. That's why the scriptures are telling you to think upon the wrath that's coming at the end and repent. Let this motivate you. Don't let your sins weigh you down because that's what they want to do. Right. That's what they're supposed to do. And our job is to overcome those sins. That's why Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13 says those who endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Right. You understand? You got to go through these things, man. You got to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand, man. You understand? All those that is joined to the living, there is hope. Let's get it. Ecclesiastes. 9 and 4, it says, For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion, right? So if you're joined to the living, there is hope for you, man, right? We are we are those dogs, man, that, that you know what I'm saying, that's, that's n that don't have any stature or might compared to these dead lions. But we have the living spirit within us, you understand? So that will triumph anything. They will triumph um, any powerful lion, Right? That these other nations, they are mighty lions shooting us down in the streets and all type of shit, right? But they're dead. They don't have the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh right? The Lord deals with them on the left hand side, right? He deals with us in righteousness on the right hand side, man, right? That living dog is better than that dead lion, right? From the beginning, we've been better than a dead lion, man, right? 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 But we all those that are joined to the living, there is hope. We know because what? The wages of sin is death, man. Romans chapter 6, the verse 23. That's why it's very important to repent, right? It's not going to be no long lesson, man. You understand? But I want to touch on a couple precepts because we need to know that this is very important, right? Repentance is very important. You have to repent, man. You know, let's get Cyrac 18 to 30 real quick. All right. 18. Verse 30. It says, Go not after thy lusts, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. If thou givest thy soul the desires that please her, she will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies that malign thee, man. Right? 
Right? Don't give your soul, don't give your body, don't give your belly everything that uh, it lusts for, man. If you give if you give yourself over to all your desires, then you will be a laughing stock, man, amongst your enemies. You will be ultimately put to death, man. The scriptures tell you that the mind is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Right? But the Lord tries the reins. Let's get it. The Lord tries the reins of man's minds and give them according to their ways, man. So if you over here giving your, your soul the desires that please her over and over and over again, you know what I'm saying? Not showing any balance, not doing anything according to the Lord, then guess what? You're going to be given over to that lust and to destruction, man. You understand? That's why it's very important to repent. Over and over and over again, man. Throughout the day, show remorse for the evil lust, man. Show the more to show remorse for the your wicked appetites, man. You understand? That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be just out here, just uh, you know, what I'm saying, um, doing anything we want. We are God's chosen people, man. There's no man on this earth that sinneth not. So everybody needs to be repenting constantly, man. Over and over again, right? Let's get Ezekiel 18 and 30 real quick. Ezekiel 18, verse 30, right? It says, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin, right? So this is the Lord telling us he will judge the house of Israel, everyone according to their ways, man. You understand? Another uh, precept here. Let's get it. Ezekiel 33 and 11. Ezekiel 33 verse 11. It says, say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will ye die, O house of Israel, man? That's the Lord asking the question. Why must you die? Repent, the truth been given unto you, man. And with this, I want to give all honor and glory to you. How about you? Know, Shai, hopefully this was edifying. You know, on to the next one, man. I want to give double honors to all my elders and apostles. A great millstone for teaching me sound doctrine. Strong shall I want to you men and women out there doing this work diligently, making your calling and your election sure, and chiefly keeping the faith, right? Shalom, Israel.